Okay, good morning and uh, welcome everyone. Uh, good to be back in the uh, understanding the prophetic class. I know it comes like the beginning of the week and the end of the week. I don't know why it's like this, but that's how it is. But hope you're not forgetting what you're learning in the first class, uh, you know, and what we continue here in the second one. Okay, so let's pray and uh, we will get started. I want to request from someone from the online batch to lead us in prayer. And then someone on campus can close off. So I'm giving you a heads up. <laughs> so online batch, please, somebody, could you lead us in prayer? Okay, um, who would like to lead us, please? Yes, Nina. Can you hear me? <laughs> Am I audible? Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Gracious, loving Father, thank you so much, Lord, for this day and for this time that you have given us to come to you, to come to your feet and to learn from you, Lord. We thank you for what we have been uh, learning in the classes that have gone by about the prophetic and the apostolic. We thank you so much, Lord, for all the inputs. And we pray and ask Holy Spirit that you will uh, speak to each one of us and you will open our eyes uh, to even more wonderful revelations, Lord, and that your word would really become a part of us and that we may grow in the understanding of the subject. Come at Pastor Nancy also and each one of us also into your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. Thank you, thank you, Nina. Um, we've been learning about the prophetic from the Old Testament, and uh, we saw various experiences. We saw how prophets were trained up. We saw how uh, the miraculous was connected to the prophetic, and then we um, also observed the phrases that were used when uh, the spirit of the Lord would come upon somebody and the prophetic anointing would work through them. Things like the hand of the Lord came upon me. Uh, I received the burden of the Lord. So this is some of the language or a seriousness, a sense of seriousness, as we saw in the passage um, given in Jeremiah. Or the spirit of the Lord lifted me, as uh, Ezekiel says. So these were the experiences of the Old Testament prophets. Um, and we went on to talk about warnings and judgments. Uh, now, in the Old Testament, we find that there are many warnings, uh, especially coming through from prophets. And uh, we also notice that you know, when people repent, then God is a God who is willing to forgive. He's a God who is willing to relent. Um, and uh, in the case of Ahab, we saw that he was such a wicked king. But when um, you know he, he repented, the pronouncement of judgment was such that it did not come on him all at once. You know, God was gracious to kind of stagger it. So we also see that judgment is very severe, not only in the Old Testament. Uh, see, we live in uh, grace in the New Testament. We we all know that. But uh, at times when the, the glory of God is uh, very uh, strong, the judgment also comes very quickly. I, I'm sure you would have learned about this in the book, in uh, Revival's Visitations and Moves of God, like Acts chapter 5, right? Ananias and Sapphira. So uh, our God is a loving God, but he's also a righteous God. Um, and anything that violates his character, uh, that is not, uh, it cannot be accommodated. It just cannot be accommodated because it's not part of his holiness, right? So when things went wrong, we find that there was judgment, severe judgment that came against people. Uh, and uh, that was conveyed through prophecies that many of the prophets brought. There were also times when God refused to speak. So we see this in the Old Testament. Now, uh, for us, one thing about our God is that he's a speaking God. That's how we started this course. And we said, because he speaks, we want to learn how he communicates with us. But can there be um, 
something done from our sides which may stop him from speaking. Uh, we observe in the Old Testament that there have been uh, two such instances. One is Saul's rebellion. What did Saul do? We know that he tried to make an offering to God like a priest. He imitated um, Samuel and uh, he wanted to hear from God because he wanted to hear. He did what Samuel, a priest, uh, or sorry, the prophet should do. Uh, and uh, that was not pleasing in God's sight because he was stepping out of his uh, anointing and he was trying to do something else. And it really made God very angry and God did not respond to him. So rebellion, rebellion um, displeases God. And there is the danger of not uh, hearing from God because God is not speaking anymore. OK, so that's quite uh, uh, tough. Then idolatry. There is another uh, time in the book of Ezekiel. We see this, that uh, people were given to idols. They were given to, you know, worship of other gods. And that really upset God, uh, even though he had worked so wonderfully in their lives and he had prospered them, people were turning to other things. And they were not giving the due worship, which uh, only God deserves. And that again upset God. And he did not answer the people. Though they inquired of him, they, he just did not answer. So these are two times where we find that God was silent. Okay, and uh, uh, f for us to sort of keep that in our hearts, rebellion, idolatry, uh, these are some things that uh, prevented God from speaking to his people. Now, moving forward, we observe in the Old Testament that the Spirit of God moved in such a way that it came upon people the Holy Spirit. So the experience of being anointed by the Holy Spirit was not common for all the children of Israel. We've already stated there were kings who were anointed, there were priests, and then there were prophets. So only these people received the anointing of the Lord, and they would uh, move in the prophetic anointing. Now, when we look at the New Testament, we know that people can now be filled with the Holy Spirit, all of us, all of us. And when we are filled with the Holy Spirit, that seems to be that starting point where the believer can start to operate in the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay, we know even in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2, that's what happened, right? So the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, the baptism in the Holy Spirit, and people began to speak in tongues. So that was the initiation. Apart from this, uh, here in our notes, we have uh, some passages from uh, Peter's writing, Apostle Peter. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 20 and 21. Uh, if anyone is there, you could please read it. It is on page 56 in the PDF version. Second Peter 1, 20 and 21. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of scripture is of any private interpretation. Pro pro prophecy never come by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke to, spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Old Testament, there were holy men of God who were moved by the Holy Spirit. That's how they did it. And now each one of us can um, have that experience because of the baptism in the Holy Spirit. Another important thing for us to note is that, see, prophecy is what? Prophecy is when God speaks. When we consider the Bible, the Bible is written by the inspiration of God. Okay, so in essence, all scripture is prophetic. God speaking, that's what prophecy is. So all scripture is actually prophetic. These are prophetic scriptures. Even if we say that statement, it would be correct. It is prophetic, all scripture, because it's by the inspiration of God uh, and uh, by the leading of the Holy Spirit. People have uh, written things down. So all passages of scripture that way have come from God's heart. 
Okay, but over and above the written word, uh, we know that the gift of prophecy is also something that operates under the new covenant. Okay, so the next uh, section here talks about the difference. What I've been stating uh, that earlier there were certain select prophets who heard from God, but today all believers can hear from God. Uh, and thank God we have the Bible. Like even if, let's say, we don't get any uh, unique new word from God ever, we already have the prophetic scriptures with us. Right? So God has already spoken. Thank God he speaks more. And what he speaks is in confirmation to what he has revealed, what is in his nature. That's also there. But we'll come to that point later. OK? So uh, yeah. So that is a little bit about the Old Testament and the prophetic anointing there. Any thoughts? Clarifications before we go on to New Testament. It was in the Bible always uh, written through the inspiration of God and all. So after after this, um, like everyone can prophesy or or they can. I mean, God will speak with everyone directly. It's not like through the priests and all. Like before, so the people, uh, the some of the, uh, I mean, some of the men of God, uh, they told like um, they went to heaven. Uh, there was, I mean, their spirit was went to heaven with God, and they, they, so many of the people told their experiences, like a great man of God, and they wrote books also, like. So how we can take this? Can we consider all these things or the truth? And and there are many people who are in India also like. Jesus Tenkren and uh, Ravindranath Tagore. There, there are so many men of God who quoted that they went to heaven, and 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 there are people who told that there are, there are nine students who wrote a book. They went to hell and saw, and they wrote a book. It was it was a it it went to fire and all. So so uh, so the thing is, on the other side, we are we are telling like. God will speak with everyone directly. It's not like before. So how we can consider these things? Can we take into the consideration? Good question. Um, we'll just look at one scripture. I think that should help us. So let's go to uh, John chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. Yeah, John chapter 16, verses 13 and 14. Okay, let me re read that for us. Uh, it says, however, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will tell you things to come. So a couple of things that we can see here. We are saying that when the Holy Spirit is with us, he guides us. So your question, he will lead us. Yeah, that's true, because that's what Jesus is saying. When the Spirit of God comes, he will guide us he will lead us he will tell us things to come okay but notice he's called as the spirit of truth spirit of truth and he doesn't speak his own thing he um not his own authority it says but whatever he hears he will speak that means he's very much in sync with the lord jesus the father the godhead Okay, so that's why we are saying earlier also I said 1 John 5 verse 7 that the spirit and the word are in agreement. They're not in disagreement. Okay, so that's how the spirit will lead. So when we hear things like this, um, we, need a, we need to be able to discern. So people may say different, different things. Now each portion of what they are saying, some parts may be correct. 
some parts may be inaccurate we need discernment to uh, check it with scripture and see like what is correct what is incorrect okay so for that uh, to have a good knowledge of the word of god helps okay so that is one thing of course we can also depend on the witness of the holy spirit because uh, like romans 8:16 it says the spirit bears witness with our spirit so if there is some error the holy spirit will give us that feeling like you know that's a spiritual feeling i'm talking about where we will sense that something is off okay now when when we we sense that uh, we must not kind of over um, shut it off pray and see lord why why am i sensing this in my spirit is there some thing more that you want to reveal and then kind of clarify whether anything is inaccurate that is first now <laughs> the other test verse 14 it says he will glorify me for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you here's the second thing second one is the holy spirit will always glorify jesus he'll not do anything which will um you know we know jesus is exalted he'll not do anything to bring that down so one is what the holy spirit does will be in agreement his leading will be in agreement with the word of god and yes he leads us second is he will always glorify jesus christ the holy spirit so when people come up with these things and they start saying i saw this i saw that i went here i went this at the end of what they have shared ask the question who is glorified is it glorifying that person is it glorifying a ministry is it glorifying you know something else an activity or is it really truly putting uh, helping people put their faith in jesus christ so a true prophecy will always draw people to christ you got it so these are all some pointers which we have to use to assess what people are saying got it so there's a lot of work to be done uh, to discern whether something is from god or not does it help um and when 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 same this uh, conversation came and uh, when 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 one person told like this so it it have to be in agreement with the word and the same the same conversation we had and then the other person said like so uh, so the bible was written through people uh, through the inspiration of god so we are believing that that's an inspiration of god We, we we are not even there in that time but we are just believing by faith how we cannot believe now and we are we are telling like uh, we have to make an agreement uh, to the word and 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 there are so many people who wrote uh, different different books on 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 what they have, what they have experienced and why why we should not take these things into consideration that personal revelations uh, that much seriously See, as far as the word of god is concerned i'm sure in apologetics you've learned about the canonization of scripture and how uh, when that happened you know the the fathers of the church everyone was in agreement that we are really not you know leaving anything out which which needs to be in scriptures so it has been confirmed finalized approved everything has been done and accepted from that point onwards so anything that comes outside of the scriptures um that has to be assessed in line with the scriptures okay now the spirit of god is who has led us to sort of you know come up with the canonization of scripture the final uh, authority of god's word and we give in to that authority of god's word now everything we sometimes use the term like extra biblical additional things that come up okay now all those things the right way to assess them is you have to assess them in line with scripture that has already been given okay because see so many things can keep coming up and people can claim that it is through the inspiration of the spirit it's through the inspiration of the spirit but the scriptures are already given now no we can't uh, uh, sort of go back on the scriptures yeah
Yeah, there are. I know, I know. There are lots of writings. There are lots of writings. There are um, books that people say hey, that also should have been included, but it's not been included. But I would just. I mean, I don't want to get into like apologetics now. But there, there is a way in which scriptures were uh, brought together and concluded that this is it. Okay, uh, so. We just stick to that. We just stick to that. Is that fine or you're still wondering? Yeah. Uh, like, ma'am, well, we've been saying that uh, the prophecies should align with the word of God. But, uh, like, uh, when some people use a word of prophecy or like we know like uh some like i'm not telling everyone but sometimes happens like they will tell like no god will take you there this is gonna happen and all but if we see it's not literally will be found in uh bible for example if we say like uh, uh god was taking you to to that land and they will say the name of the country also but we can't see it exactly in the bible then how we can align them how we can test yeah so see when we say it must be aligned in essence it must be aligned like i let me just give you some very um you know uh sort of how do i put it obvious examples if i make a prophecy and say like god is calling you to rob a bank right uh, it's a big bank and god is giving you favor you can get inside and you can rob it and you know you can become a millionaire uh, god wants us blessed okay but not like this because it's going against the nature of god okay uh, so see at least as a believer based on the word i know this is not the nature of god he is a god of righteousness so this cannot happen so when we say aligned, we don't mean word to word. It will be there in the Bible, not like that. Essence, essence. See, there are all kinds of prophecies. We'll come to this. People say things like, um, you know, if people are like a couple is married, hmm? it's a covenant. It's a covenant between God, the man, and the woman. But prophetic words sometimes, you know, we've we've at least I've heard people say. Things like uh, uh, this was not God's will. You know, you have to get out of this marriage. God has somebody better for you. But when people are saying things like this, if someone is a young believer, they will not know that they have to check with the word of God. They'll just go by, oh, the, the mighty prophet of God said it. I'll go ahead with it. You know, I'll uh, find someone else. People make decisions, life decisions on the basis of such prophecies. But the essence of what scripture says, right? Honor the covenant of God. You can't do things like that. You got it. So the essence, uh, uh, Prince, it won't be there word to word. But when somebody is saying something, is it in the nature of God? Or is it violating the nature of God? Is it glorifying Jesus? Or is it not glorifying Jesus? These are some straightforward questions that we can answer. Go by that. OK? We won't have everything. See, for example, let's say God is giving you an uh, uh, Apple iPad. Where is Apple iPad? Which uh, reference? You can't find it. But maybe it's a blessing. It's coming into your life. Somebody is prophesying it. OK, praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> right? So things change over uh, the course of history. You won't find every word in the Bible, car, bike, principle. Right, the essence, it should not violate the nature of God. Okay, that's what it is. <laughs> I, I think I need like five years. <laughs> to... <laughs> so it was, it was from the last class, ma'am, about uh, this um, prophetic school. So I, 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 to be honest, I don't, I, I heard about it, but it didn't went into my mind anytime but I, I thought uh, in the last class only i thought really seriously so when we speaking about this prophetic school like samuel and all uh so there is an argument uh like uh, like 
making uh, prophesying is good i mean everyone will prophesy and all god given that uh, ability for everyone that's a desire we have to desire it so when comes to this when we have to receive this prophesy gift is is a different thing and practicing or working on it on how to prophesy is another thing so but but when when it comes like there are there are schools uh, in, in before that they train people how to prophesy how to be uh, just in, uh, grow in this uh, in this way and and we can see another another side also there are many people or or in the name of god they prophesied and it went wrong and 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 this is this is this is making a lot of damage to god and to christianity and how can we actually like support these things like prophesy we can practice and we can we can make mistakes if if we make mistakes also we have to learn from it and how can we tell that and other on the other side it it is making a lot of damage to the name of god and to the christianity and to the whole this situation yeah uh, yeah and i see where you're coming from do you remember we learned about how a true prophet a true prophecy is not just about its fulfillment uh, you know in the old testament where god said that uh, people prophesy from their own uh, minds and they make fools of the people right so uh, even if something is fulfilled what did god say he said that um, you need to check whether it is taking you away to other gods so if that is happening then he is not a true prophet okay so that is a test we have to employ whether a prophecy is taking us closer to god or taking us away from god let me just quickly tell us go back to the reference there because it's so important test of prophecy deuteronomy 13 verses 1 through 5 okay where uh, deuteronomy 13 1 to yeah so we must be very careful of that even if there is a prophet dreamer of dreams um arises among you and the sign or the wonder comes to pass in verse 2 it says so the fulfillment of a prophetic word does not mean it is from god so for most of us that is the test someone said something did it happen or it didn't happen if it happened yeah it has to be from god if it didn't happen it's not from god not not necessarily see what what does this verse say right it says even if it happens but it's leading you away from god it's not from me that's what god is saying now coming to the prophets that you're talking about who have said something not happened right so um see usually i think i've made the statement earlier all personal prophecy is yeah conditional there is something required on the part of the person uh, and if they do that that's when it will be fulfilled okay and when it comes to uh, let's say something about a region or a community of people it also depends on their response if you go back to the story of jonah god told him you know fire brimstone like these people will be destroyed with that in his heart he went he he proclaimed the word to them but to his amazement the people repented and he was so upset he was so very upset that god you changed you changed your mind i thought these people are going to suffer but they are not going to suffer so the prophet is upset with god because god relented so now how does god relent very much in line with his nature he doesn't do when we say god changed his mind it's not like god changed not like that it is within the provision 
he is a merciful god he is a compassionate gracious god so within that part of his nature it's possible right so that way what i'm trying to tell you is sometimes prophets may say something but it may not happen because people's response could have been different and then what god spoke that may not be the actual outcome something else happens and what do we start saying we start saying oh false prophet false prophet but the prophet may have been accurate in what they stated okay so now just coming to uh, you're saying the name of god will get affected if it doesn't get fulfilled so that part i think that we have to deal with it very responsibly okay so when we prophesy we got to be careful um we'll come to it again in the practice of uh, the gift of prophecy we say something like if there are specifics like okay you're going to marry this person or you're going to get married on whatever you know 20th february 2024 generally we avoid like very very specific details in the simple gift of prophecy right because what if you're not accurate what if something you miss there and then it discourages that person right we you could say um uh something like, like if someone's moving in the office of a prophet maybe they are they they can be very specific and accurate but in the simple gift of prophecy when people start off because we know that they may make mistakes we encourage them to keep it broad like don't go so specific okay uh, or use language like i sense i feel uh okay this is what i feel you pray about it get a confirmation so when you present something like that you allow for the person to check it out now the issue happens when people prophesy and say thus says the lord and something doesn't happen something he, he'll say 20th february it'll happen 20th march and they'll be like false prophet <laughs> you know so these are the things that happen so if the prophet can present it in a better way we can avoid the experience that you are talking about and one should also think where to say this do you want to say it like quietly privately sometimes people go say it on the stage and get into trouble they post it on youtube and get into trouble <laughs> you know so the platform that we choose uh, also makes a difference if you feel like hey god is telling you something so big i know who's going to be the prime minister or something we talk to two three people who are prayer warriors and you guys pray about it you know instead of making it a big deal and confusing people and you know making it political so many things happen uh, which can actually be avoided the confusion can be avoided if the prophets or the people prophesying think you know what might this cause should i put it out on this platform or not so then you can avoid many things like uh, the other thing also i mentioned like when we are um, pre uh, when we are teaching to a congregation or to a group of people like um, about the prophecy prophecy gift and it, it will tell like it's okay it's okay um, if to make mistake but you just uh, keep trying it and yesterday i was why i was very specific about it is yesterday i was uh, i was watching instagram in that uh, uh, one of the sister is in uh, interviewing one i think he is a pastor from us or something i don't know who is it okay so he was uh, telling like i was uh, i was in i was in in a in a trauma like uh, he was telling i don't even know that i prophesied these many years uh, so many things some happened and some didn't happen and i uh, i actually realized it was not from god i'm just saying from myself from my heart what i felt i was thinking like okay this god is giving in my heart god is just give. i was just closing my eyes and i was just randomly searching one verse and then keeping and then saying it some more happened some more didn't. i had the video also so it was i was telling like it was all i i i realized it it was not all from god and i was just uh, comparing all this 
so how how come we can i mean how dare we can tell like it's okay if you if you speak something wrong but you just try it more and i and i wanted to know how this uh, uh, prophecy school of prophecy in, in those times how it actually happened and how they trained in this gift <clears throat> so see first of all uh, anand when we say that mistakes happen we are not saying that um, you you speak whatever you want that's not how it is okay once we've taught the word and people are aware of what the gift of prophecy uh, is like and they operate by faith uh, then when we say make mistakes all we mean is see even in that um, i mean you all are asking questions which are, uh, we are supposed to discuss a little later in the course but i'm still going ahead with the answers um, when it comes to simple things like okay for example i'm seeing a picture of a field which is very green and uh, um, you know like you you know that it's a very productive field and you're looking at a person and you're you're uh, sharing that with them uh, maybe what god is saying is that uh, you know uh, i am going to bless you okay so when we train up people to flow in prophetic uh, in prophesying we would say when they are starting off to keep it general like that like i feel god is saying that he will bless you now with a prophecy like that do you think any harm can happen to anyone i don't think so because this is like a very simple way of prophesying but when we train people we also say if you're getting a word which is so specific like you know you must quit your job or the other things that i stated you are going to get married to so and so then you you don't you would take some more time to pray okay so this is all part of the training all we are saying is things that are not going to uh like make them make a big decision it's fine when you make mistakes like that it's not going to affect the person too much those are the kind of mistakes we are talking about we are not talking about say whatever you like you know uh, anything that comes to your mind you do it no and we will talk about all the senses that we have and how the holy spirit speaks how to identify if it is the voice of god so only after we have done all these tests we are supposed to speak so this person whoever this is and they are saying they are not sure now and all that means they they probably did not know how from the word how the gift of prophecy operates and it's really sad it's really sad that uh, they did not equip themselves in that right but we are not going that route we are equipping people with the word first then we have a very good idea about what is what is from god what is my own imagination if it's my own imagination discard all that we are going to learn and on the basis of that we are saying okay now is god speaking to you sincerity of my heart is very important see i can say anything i can say anything god is blessing you god is taking you no but if i am truly prophesying in the name of jesus it's my responsibility to be very sincere am i really hearing from god now, there have been times like even post service at church i don't have a word i just say okay let's close benediction over right sometimes people will ask you any word any word you just have to say sorry no it's as important as prophesying staying silent so the, all this becomes a part of uh, prophesying that training you're asking you no know, what is the training how to hear from god how to know if it is from god okay how to present it and let me make one point uh, today see we all we always say god is pouring out his spirit okay that is the wine god is releasing the wine the new wine but where should the wine be contained in the wine skin and we need new wine skin right so that represents our character we cannot operate we cannot hold the the mighty work of the spirit for very long if our character is not right we may operate for a little bit but 
character is so important like integrity whatever i'm saying sincerity many of these things so when it comes to training of the prophet just as much as we talk about the gift how to operate in the gift we say what kind of a heart we have to carry for the people what kind of a heart you know we have to uh, carry before the lord so my character training of that character it's also so important to operate in the gifts of the holy spirit it's not just the gifts and honestly anand if we think like if we carry that kind of a heart and the character if i come to you and i'm prophesying i'll really think if i say this to him what will happen you know will it will it affect him negatively will he make a foolish decision because i really care you got it so the heart the character is the most important thing then many things we'll figure out how we should say it where we should say it we'll figure out all those things so that also becomes the part of the training okay i i hope uh, that is answering some questions to you yeah okay right fine you have to pray for me <laughs> I thought I'll finish this chapter and then maybe in the next chapter also, but uh, it's eleven forty-five. Okay, okay, no problem. We can do this. <laughs> okay, fine. Yeah, we have two classes, but we have two topics: prophetic and apostolic. Yeah, no, no problem. Take it at your pace. We'll we'll see how to do this. Okay, fine. So, shall we close then? Uh, unless there is any question yeah okay ask yeah yeah i see with it yeah yeah Mm -hmm. um, I also I also do prophesy, so I also did, and then I was thinking, oh, is it is it my thought or is, it? and and I was when I when I did that also when I asked people also they were very yeah they told yeah we are in this yeah this is what we are going through. And then this 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 gave me a little okay, fine <laughs> like that. But but sometimes when we when we when we swing in this between personal and it's from God personal and this own thoughts, it'll it'll take us to a point. Okay, what we are doing is not right or good or not. We'll be in this confusion, and it and and it'll affect us so much first initially. And I don't know about others. Uh, th that is secondary others coming to us and asking questions and all but it 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 will affect our faith and this uh this relationship with god uh, the... no, but in a way it's good because it keeps us in check when these questions arise within us are you sure uh, there are times i've said i'm not sure i think but i i'm not sure you know that you go through that within yourself but it also pushes you then i feel like hey you know what i need to know the word better i need to pray more in the spirit you know i need to worship more something like that it'll push you for the better so mm -hmm. mm -hmm. correct Yes. Mm. Yeah, it's a process. It's a process. When we build people, uh, it would need to be done step by step. And for somebody who's leading, for a pastor, uh, there can also be a lot of trouble because you find that people with a sincere heart are prophesying wrong and creating trouble in small group. Then you have to step in and you have to. So it's a lot of work. Yeah. I don't know about much about prophecy actually, but still, when people are prophesying over you, we need to pray in our heart like, Lord, if it's really from you, let it come to pass, or just uh, we have to do like that. Uh, 
uh, what we can do is uh, like do not despise prophecies okay the scripture says that i'll just tell you which one yeah okay 1 thessalonians 520 so uh it means what we can do is when someone says something you take it okay but you start to pray about it and say lord reveal like which parts of what they have said is from you and uh, the holy spirit will reveal then you hold on to it because again if you go to a passage in first corinthians chapter 14 a uh, paul says that prophecy must be judged why judged not because the prophecy the pure gift is um incorrect but it comes through human vessels right so sometimes in our communication something would have gone off that is why we judge like which portions went went off and then we are able to decide okay this 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 section is truly from the lord and then you believe that the other parts leave it on take when somebody is saying a prophetic word just take it of course we can pray lord let it be from you but once you take it you go back judge don't just act on it always judge prophetic words and then only act on it yes sir help okay great Okay so if there are no more questions we'll pray and somebody from on campus is supposed to pray today <laughs> yeah father god we thank you lord for this time you have given us lord uh, father help us to really move in your prophetic and help us to hear from you lord with clarity and help us to build our character lord so that you can speak to us and we will be a blessing to others lord in jesus name we pray Amen. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. Uh, have a blessed weekend, and we'll yeah, a pleasure. So see you all next class. Bye.